What are your expectations for the upcoming season? We expect to uh, try to win every single game that we're playing in, and we want to be very competitive. Conference is going to be a tough go, but uh, we're going to give it our best. Um, Carnival tournament title is uh, within reach. We play for the championship tomorrow night. That was one of the goals, and then also we hold a tournament in October, and we'd like to win that one as well. Now that you're in the season, how are things going for the team? Pretty well. We're having some uh, kids are having very good individual starts so far. Uh, we're 4-0. Uh, we've scored 22 goals and given up zero. So things are off to a great start. Do you have any areas where you need improvement? Always. We could always improve. Uh, we could talk a little bit more while we're on the field. We can move without the ball, uh, for those that might know what that means. Uh, and, and always continue to work better um, as a team and move forward and progress and hopefully peak at the right time at the end of the year. What are your goal? What are the goals being set for the team this year? These boys want to repeat as regional champs. Um, we did not win the NBC title last year, where we did the two years before that. So we'd like to win a regional title, uh, compete for a sectional title, and win conference as well. Is there a life lesson that you try to instill in the players? More importantly than winning, that's one of the things we try to teach them to be strong young men, uh, to fight through some adversity. Make good decisions, be responsible, be respectful, and uh, trustworthy, as well as be uh, involved in the community. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. What are your expectations for the upcoming season? We, every year in tennis, our expectations are to just kind of play as well as we can throughout the regular season. Because unlike most sports, your record in the regular season doesn't mean a whole lot as a team. Uh, our individuals, you know, like our number one singles, our number one doubles, which is Matty Booger this year's singles, and Ashton Toole and Ann Snyder's in doubles. They need to have good wins against teams that are girls that are in the sectional so that they can get a seed higher than them because the ultimate goal every year is to get some get our girls to qualify for state. Um, so we want to obviously want to compete in the conference, win as many matches as we can, but in the end we're, we're building everything up to October when the sectional happens. Now that you're into your season, how are things going for the team? Um, we have played a tournament in Springfield, only the doubles portion, the singles got canceled. I thought our doubles teams played pretty well that day. Um, and we are just one and one now. Alton beat us pretty bad on Tuesday. Uh, but we turned around last night and beat at Metro East Lutheran pretty, pretty, pretty handily. Um, and I mean, we're showing improvement. We don't have a senior on the roster, so uh, we're going to have our growing pains. Uh, are there areas that you need improvement? Yeah, just about every area. Um, 
our girls worked really hard, uh, especially Maddie Ann and, and Ashton. They've really committed uh, in the off season also to tennis. Uh, but you know, I'd say our biggest um, need and improvement is just uh, focusing on staying at every point, keeping keeping balls in play, and then hitting using our power, which all three of them have when. You know when it's there. You know, taking kind of taking what the opponent gives us. What are the goals being set for the team this year? Uh, the main goal is to, is to return somebody to state. Last year, Ashton and Ellen made it to state in doubles. Uh, that's the that's the number one goal is to uh, uh, play well enough at one singles and one doubles to get us a, a, a better shot at, at qualifying for state. Is there a life lesson that you try to instill in your players? Yes. Uh, in fact, it came up yesterday, and I do this with the basketball players and the tennis, um, and that's we're going to lose some games, some matches, whatever. Um, you're going to play bad from time to time. You're going to play great from time to time. Um, if you fight for every point in tennis or every possession in basketball or whatever it is, um, then you can always hold your head up high. If you lose, you take something away from it. If you learn from a loss, uh, learn from a failure, then in the end that failure was worth it. And yesterday I thought our girls learned from how poorly they played Tuesday at Alton. And all of them, all seven girls that played yesterday made adjustments from the way they played Tuesday to the Wednesday. And they all played so much better. It was, it was a very proud moment for me and for them. Okay, thank you. All right. Girls softball is just coming to an end, but for those eighth graders, my expectation for next year coming into the high school um, is to come in already knowing the practice drills and knowing what my expectations are for dress and hustle and commitment to the team. Now that you're into the season, how are things going for your team? They're going very well. Um, the girls all show up to practice, ready to practice. They hustle through the drills. They show up for games, excited to play, and uh, we have been winning and losing some, but overall I think we've got a great bunch of girls. Are there any life lessons you try to teach them? Um, hard work pays off. Uh, commitment to the program. Uh, I think these girls understand that I expect them, that once they join our group, that they are committed. And even though uh, something better might come up, if they know they have a practice or a game, they know that um, their responsibility is to show up for, for our program. Thank you. Thank you. Brett Beecham. So, what is the play this year? It's called You Can't Take It With You. <laughs> what is special about this play? Um, I believe it's one of the funniest plays ever written. I may be the greatest American comedy. 1939 Pulitzer Prize winning play. I've directed it three other times. I've been in it. Uh, they're my favorite playwrights. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. So people are going to come and laugh. When is the play this year? Uh, we open up October 1st, uh, and then we have performances on October 3rd and 4th. Okay. And final question, who is your favorite child? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. I have four. <laughs> Um, I guess since for the interview, it must be you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my girl. Okay. There we go. All right. So, they're both. Could you sit in this chair here so I can see if I'm blocking the view of Mr. Jacobs here? Let's move on. Okay. So, hello. This Hi. is, I'm Belton Brown, and I'm Belton. We're uh, doing a segment on uh, interviewing coaches. This seems like they're coaching the right. and stuff our lives in this way. Right. We're here with Mr. Jacobs, the football coach here at the high school. Yeah. And we were just wondering if we could ask you a couple of questions. Absolutely. Fire away. So, we'd love the first question. 
So my first question to you would be, who or what was your biggest inspiration growing up? Well, I mean, it was coaches. Um, I came from a split home, so uh, it, and got involved in athletics at an early age, and, and really the coaches that I had were, were father figures, and, and you know, I was a three-sport athlete. So it was more of a coach thing as opposed to like a select thing. Oh yeah, yes. I, I had some very good coaches. I'm from a small town and had an excellent high school basketball coach and a football coach that's in the Hall of Fame. And, and uh, it really inspired me. I went and played sports in college and uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's where God called me to go. How different was your life I don't know what else I would do. I mean, I just love coaching. Your passion lines up with, with God's will for your life. It's pretty fun. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be a coach. And, and, uh, and it's taken me many places across the country, um, taken me to Europe, uh, just provided so many opportunities um, with publications. Um, but the main thing is just the relationships that we get and we build with kids and parents and communities. I mean, this is our sixth. Sixth stop. So I mean, there's a lot of people in communities, and I've just been blessed with opportunities to, to build programs. And I'm definitely excited about what we're doing here in Jersey. Okay. Uh, my next question to you would be: Is there a go-to thing you use to pump the team up, or like a philosophy that you know, try to put on? Yeah, I mean we, we do a lot of things, and every team's different. Some teams don't need to be motivated, they are self-motivated, and other teams need it, and so part of our job as coaches is to find the pulse and what, what we need. Um, you know, so like I said, every team's different, and if you have good senior leaders that, that are motivated and, and do the right things, that kind of follows, but if, if you don't, then the coaches need to be there. So, you know, this is my 29th year of coaching, so there's a lot of experience that I have with different kinds of groups, so got to go to whatever works, you know, to be honest with you, and, and uh, you know, this year is, is, uh, is challenging, we have, we have some, actually have some younger guys that are really stepping up to lead, and, and we use the, the phrase that leadership does not have an age, you don't have to be a senior to lead, so, uh, you know, you just, it just depends on the group that you have. But, but you feel good about the group? Oh, absolutely, oh, I love our guys, I love our kids. This is, this is my fifth year here, so all the kids are, are all mine, you know, and uh, they're program kids now, and they know what to expect, and, and we've had, you know, a lot of success the last three years, and getting to the playoffs, and turning out some kids to go play in college, and, and uh, the community is, is really behind it, our administration is behind it, and I, I absolutely love it here, and the kids that we have. Expectations have raised since, since we've gotten here, and, and that's where we want it to be. We want high expectations, so uh, that's, that's what we've been working for. Yeah. What are you looking forward to the upcoming season? Uh, we have a really young team, so really getting better each week. Um, you know, we're starting, I think, four sophomores on offense and four juniors, so we're pretty young there. Defensively, you know, we have a new defensive coordinator. Uh, we have a couple new coaches. So the fun, challenging part is, is kind of putting it all together. Um, but each week's different. So we, we really thrive on getting better each week and improving. Uh, we watch a lot of film together and just watching the, 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 the kids grow, both physically and Really, you know, we use the phrase, we have a game, which means, you know, they have to play us. And sometimes the opponent is us. You know, if the kids are going to the game, they don't believe they can win. Or, and, and that's the biggest thing, is getting them to believe that we can win and, and letting them try.
trust the technique that we're teaching in practice and seeing that on film and just watching everything kind of grow together is, is really fun and rewarding. All right, well, I think that's all we have for you today. Right. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I appreciate and it. I wish you luck in all the Thanks. Day. Thanks. Okay. Blue, blue. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how this. Hi, we are here today with Mrs. Tall, who is the director of the choirs here at JCHS and the show choir, which is what we are asking her about today. So, what is the show choir show this year? The show choir show is the music of Hairspray. When is the first show choir performance? It's actually this Saturday at the Grafton Art in the Park. Um, the jazz ensemble and jazz combo will also be performing. I think we start at 11. We're usually done by about noon, mm -hmm. so real soon. Why did you pick Hairspray for the show choir show this year? We've loved the music to Hairspray for a long, long time, and we don't see it possible to um, present it as a musical, so this is a way for the kids to present the music in Hairspray. And finally, what is special about the show choir? Well, show choir is for students to um, sing, dance, and act at the same time. Plus, they are accompanied by a, um, a live instrumental group, which makes it really special. <laughs> and um, it mean, means the kids really have to work in sync with each other. So, um, and they don't have to have prior dance um, experience. We can teach them to look like they have prior dance experience. It's, it's an awesome way to get all involved. We have kids from uh, different parts of the building too that are involved in every other things too. We have, we have uh, athletes that are part of show choir. We have kids from FFA that are part of show choir. Um, we don't just, it's not just kids that are um, involved in just the fine arts department. Mm -hmm. Thank you Mrs. Tall. Okay, thank you.